Hey everyone, so we're moving on to question 10. You can see that this is not my first time filming this, but this time I will get it right, I promise. So we're looking at a circle and we're looking at two triangles. Let's read what information we have. In the diagram below, A, B and F lie in the circle, A, B and F. The equation of the line EA, right, is 3Y minus 2X equals 8. And the gradient of the line AF equals negative 1. Okay, so this is a straight line. We just need to sort of maybe manipulate it a little bit to make it look like our traditional equals uh, y equals mx plus c. And we have the gradient there. Okay, so what I did is just that. I manipulated this to get it into our traditional y equals mx plus c line. And I said the gradient of af equals negative 1. Okay, so effectively, what you should be thinking about is you should be thinking of this gradient equals tan theta, right? So the reason I say that is because if we use this formula, we can get the angle there and the angle there, right? The reason we can get both those angles is because we have gradients of both those lines, okay? If we get those two angles, we can work out the last angle using angles of a triangle, okay? So I'm saying tan of FEA, right, equals 2 over 3 and tan of E. F A, is that right? E F A, perfect, equals negative 1. So let's figure out what each of these angles is. Okay, so inverse function of tan. So my F E A equals that. Okay, and my other one equals 45 degrees. Right, because remember, E, F, A, okay, it's going to equal 45 degrees. Okay, even though it says negative, right, you can't have negative angles in a, in a, um, um, in a triangle, right? So it's 45, okay? So then angles in a triangle, um, so then we say um, angle E, A, F plus 33.7 plus 45 equals 180 right, because of angles in a triangle, therefore EAF equals 180 minus 33.7 minus 45, oh, minus 45, not 445, so that is the value of EAF. Okay, so we went back to, to a formula that we often actually only use in paper one, but we're bringing it in here. This, remember, is the angle of inclination. Okay, remember that. Okay, let's now move on to B. So now B is an interesting one because it says if EA equals square root of 52, so where's EA? This is EA, so we're saying that equals square root of 52. And if B equals square root of 40, square root of 40, okay, then calculate the length of CB if the center of the circle of CB and what? If the center of the circle lies on CB and CB is perpendicular to AF. Okay, so what we want to do is effectively we want to get this length here. We want to get X, right? So we could do Pythag if we could find out what the base CF is, right? So let's think about how we can go about getting CF. If we could get CF, because remember CF is half of AF, because we have a line from the center perpendicular to the chord, right? So we know that these two sides are equal to each other, okay? So if we get AF, right, then we can basically work everything out. But how are we going to get AF? Now, you should be thinking of this formula here, okay? Because what they've given, what we have, right, is we have all the angles in this triangle. So let's just fill these in so we know what's going on. So that's 45. And this one is 33.7, okay? So we know, right, that we can use this formula to find AF because we can say AF, right, over the opposite angle, which is this sine 33.7, e um, equals square root of 52 over sine of 45, right? Because that's this formula. And then we can get AF. Once we get AF, we can get CF, Pythag, get X. Okay, so we know what our root is now. If you didn't follow me there, don't stress. We're going to be doing it all together. Okay, so I'm going to say, okay, we're going to say, si oh, sorry. No, I've already, really, I'm like, I'll follow, follow me and then I'm like messing up everything here. But anyways, okay. So in this case, we're going to say this is AF 
over sine 33.7. Okay, just to show what we're doing. AF, so we say this um, length over opposite angle. Then we're going to say equals that length over opposite angle. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so now let's work out what the length of AF is. So the length of AF is square root 52 times sine 30, ooh, not 22, 33.7. Okay, and then divide that by sine 45. Okay, so I'm getting AF equal to 5.66 units. Okay, I don't know what those units are, but it's just units, okay? So then we know that, what was what did we call that smaller thing? We know CF, sorry. CF equals, so just remember I said, CF is half of AF because we have a line from the center. They told us that the center lies on CB, so we know that. Um, line from center perpendicular to chord, okay? So it equals basically half of this, okay? So it equals 2.83 units but we have to say here line from center perpendicular to chord okay remember reasons are always very important in geometry okay so now we've got cf so now we want to find cb right we want to find cb so cb is going to be this square root of 40 squared minus the square root of that length okay that's just pythag Right, that shouldn't come as any surprise. Okay, minus 2.83 squared. Oh, goodness, it's a dreadful three. Okay, so we say, uh, so it's just going to be 40, right? Because square root of 40 squared is 40. Minus 2.83 squared gives us, is that right? So CB, yeah, CB squared is 31.9911. So CB. So let's root that, is 5.66 units. Okay, so it's important that we, with this question, it was all about recognizing what do we have, what formula can we use, right, with what we have to solve for what we want. Okay, so great question this one. I hope that was helpful. Let's now move on to question 11.